Hey there, welcome to the Literary Escapes podcast. I'm Becky and I'm glad you're here today. If you're a fan of books that give you an escape or let you explore other cultures, then you're definitely in the right place. So I'm glad you've joined us today. Stick around, we've got a great author interview for you. So let's jump right in. Welcome back to another episode of Literary Escapes Podcast. Today, I have a fun interview with author Deborah Senfelder. If you are a fan of Cozy Mysteries, you are definitely going to want to check this episode out. So let's jump right in. All right. So how are you today? Good, thank you. It's a little rusty on these podcasts. I haven't done one in a long time, so. <laughs> no worries. Um your books are phenomenal. Oh my gosh. I am so Thank excited you. to have found them because I love cozy mysteries. So what an exciting yeah. find for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. They're a lot of fun to write. You know? I can imagine. I have great respect for mystery authors because it feels like you need to have really good organizational skills or, you know, have all get all figured out. I know that's probably not the case, but um it feels that way as a reader. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, um, and I talk to a lot of uh, uh, fellow authors who do not plot anything. And I'm like, how do you do that? I plot everything, <laughs> everything, everything. And I'm like, that would terrify me. Same. Oh my gosh. Especially mystery writers. How do you not exactly. know where it's going? <laughs> exactly. And I, it's amazing. Sometimes they'll say, I'm halfway through the book and I change up the killer. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, it, that is carved in stone when I'm writing. That, that is that so is, crazy. But oh my gosh. That's a lot so of uh, everything else isn't carved in stone. You know, I, I make changes, but no. Big things like that because it's so much work. And I get so lucky with any red herrings or or, or other clues or misdirection. It, it, I don't know how it happens. It just happens. But if I had to go back and rework it, no. <laughs> That's so funny. I love it. So let's back up a little bit. How did you get into writing? I've always written. Um, okay. Ever since I was a little a little girl, I was uh, writing stories. And I guess it was during the time I, I graduated college, um, got a job, then I got married and I moved up to Connecticut. And I decided to write a book because I hadn't written a book before. I just done, you know, just yeah. some stories like that. And I decided it was going to be a cozy mystery. And I I didn't realize that it was a cozy mystery at the time. Okay. Yeah, this, was, this was like 30 years ago. I didn't know it, what it oh, was. Wow. And, um, but I just knew who the character was, my main character. And I wrote the manuscript and I sent it out to agents and editors. And it was promptly rejected by all of them. <laughs> uh. which, which was about right because it was not ready for our prime time at all. And okay. I set it aside and we moved to another town and I found a writer's group. Actually, I, there was a magazine what, uh, back in the day called Romantic Times Magazine. Huh, okay. And it was focused about romance based pretty much. And um, they had book reviews in it, author interviews, everything like that. You know, it was a really, it was a really nice magazine. And then they nice. ended up having a conference um, for romance readers and the authors and there was a spotlight of a local author, Nancy Block. Uh, 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 it was a spotlight just for an author, but she turned out to be local to oh, me. Okay. She lived in the town I did. So wow. I, I, yeah, I reached out to her and she invited me to a meeting, which turned out to be Romance Writers of America. And we became really good friends and I joined and I started writing again. And it just went from there. Now, you you had a culinary blog, right? I did for a while. Um, yeah, I had been writing and submitting. You know, after I found RWA Way and I was going to conferences, I was taking workshops, critique groups, all of those things. And then I was just really not making any progress. Mm -hmm. So I found blogs. That was the time blogs were starting to pop yeah. up. And I joined the blogging community and I decided that I was going to start a food blog. Nice. And that's what I did because I could write what I want, when I wanted, how I wanted. Nobody took a red pen to my words. Exactly. It was really nice, but I <laughs> yeah. did miss writing fiction. But so I had to make a decision because I was working full time. 
you know, we have a you know, life and house right. and I had the food blog. And then if I was going to write, go back to writing books, there was only so many. That's space so for time. everything. Yeah. 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 When you were with RWA, were you writing romance? Romantic suspense. Okay. Wow. Love yeah. that. Okay. Nice. And okay. Sorry. I, Go ahead. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, uh, it was romantic expense. I set the mystery aside because okay. I really liked the element of mysteries, which of course, they're, for me, they were all murders and having those two characters. So it was fun and I enjoyed it. And then I, I really decided I need to go back to it. So I, I closed down the blog completely. It's no longer online. Wow. I, I kept going back to it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Little, I get that. You know, you start writing, then, you know, something doesn't go quite right. And that's like a crutch. So I said, yeah. no, I got to get rid of it. So I did, I got rid of it. Wow. And that, nice. at that point, I found a new critique group. And eventually it just became me and my critique partner, Ellie Ash. And we've been together now for about 10 years. Nice. As partners. And I was working on a romantic expense. I had a trilogy all planned out. But something wasn't feeling right when I was writing it. It just wasn't, I don't know. I couldn't put my finger on it. You're missing and that dead person. <laughs> I know. I a few dead people, but it was just something different. You know, something I couldn't put my finger on. So I don't know. I decided, I guess it was probably about 2015. I decided I'm going to go back to a cozy mystery because I've been reading them nonstop. When I moved to this town, we had a lovely independent bookstore. And that's where I discovered culinary cozy mysteries. Oh, yeah. I mean, they, and it fits I, so I, perfectly yeah. with your background, too. That's yes, I loved it. I was like, I love them, you know, Joanne Fluke. Um, There's so many um, fun ones. Diane oh, McDavison, Leslie Meyer. I mean, all of them. And I love those books. So I was reading them all through this period of time. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to go back and try writing a culinary cozy mystery. Fun. I wrote the first three chapters, sent to my critique partner, and she says, this is what you need to write. This is you. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. And a year later, I got an agent, and I got a contract, nice. and in 2018, my first book came out, so. That's so exciting. So did you, um, have you been with Kensington the whole time then? I have been, and my okay. new series is coming out with Crooked Lane. I saw that. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. How exciting. That's yeah. awesome. So were you able to use some of your old recipes from your food blog? Um, yes. Yeah. Because they're my, right. Yeah. There's exactly. what I've been cooking and baking all these years, you know, <laughs> recipes that I've been working on for over 30 years, recipes that I've gotten from my aunts. So yes. I love that. That's awesome. I, and do you have recipes in your books? I do. I <laughs> love those kind of books. We just, in my book club, we just finished a book, Recipes for Love and Murder. And it's a cozy mystery set in South Africa. Oh. Fascinating. The recipes in there, I mean, there's like 30 ingredients per recipe, but holy moly, they sound amazing. So it does sound amazing. Yeah, it's Sally Andrew is the author. So if you want something a little different mm -hmm. um, in your perusing of cozies, um, snag that one. It's It was super fun. Oh. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, yeah. I've not had South African food before, so I'm not I'm curious about it now at, at the very <laughs> least. So so you have the food blogger mysteries, and that was the first ones that you came out with. And then you have this uh resale boutique mysteries, which yeah. sounds like a blast. Very and, fun to write. And then you have the cookie shop mysteries coming out soon. So yes. I guess the the food blog one kind of makes sense in my head. You know, it was a natural progression of your past. The resale boutique, how did that kind of come about? Well, that one came about with my, I love fashion. And I actually majored in that when I was oh, in college. Awesome. Okay. And so um, it was natural for me to um, lean into that nice. idea. Um, actually, it started with a short story that I had been trying to get into an anthology for a couple of years. They kept rejecting the short story. And I decided I wanted to write a second series. So I wrote up a, su uh, a summary, did a pitch and sent it to my editor. And that's how that happened. Nice. I love it. And so 
both of those series, you've got five in them right now, correct? Yes. And are they done? Or are they still? Um, I just had a, a resale boutique book come out in December. Okay. And then the food blogger series, another one, the sixth book. I think there's only five. There's five in the food blogger right now. The sixth book is coming out this fall. Oh, fun. Okay. And then your cookie shop one. Tell me mm -hmm. about that one. That one is coming out in June. On June 20th, it releases. That's exciting. And it features um, what I call a cookiepreneur. She is, um, she loves to bake. She learned how to bake from her aunt and every summer she and her sister would go spend her summer their summers in Wingate Connecticut and her sister would head to the beaches while she headed to her aunt's bakery where she learned how to make cookies nice. and then she grew up and she never really thought about it as a career instead she went to corporate route and mm -hmm. recently her aunt decided to retire sell the bakery and Mallory's company was downsizing so it was a perfect opportunity for her to take a leap of faith. And she oh, did. Fun. So she gave in her notice. She packed up her belongings and took her cat to Connecticut. <laughs> where She took over the ants on bakery. She made some changes to it because I found that I was really interested. I do not do cookie art. I admire it. And that is the, the amazing decorations of cookies and bouquets and baskets. The detail yeah. work is amazing. I, I do not have the talent nor the patience to do that. I understand that. Mallory does. <laughs> she does. And she's oh, she fell in love with it a few years ago. And that's what she wanted to do. She wants to make cookie bouquets for people. So she has really merged the two um, ideas together. Her aunt's traditional cookies that she was baking and selling. And then this new business opportunity, in addition to teaching cookie decorating classes. Oh, fun. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so she settled in. She has um, two employees. Claudia has been with the bakery for probably close to 30 years. And she is very much set in her ways. <laughs> and Leads to some good tension, I'm sure. It's very fun. And then there's Kip. He is Mallory's best friend. They've been best friends since childhood. He is an amazing baker and an amazing cook. And he now works for Mallory and he loves cracking corny baking jokes any chance he gets. <laughs> and his attitude is a little bit different than Claudia. So that that creates some tension within the kitchen. Right, right. All fun times. That and is then we fun. Have, it is. And I really enjoy developing these new characters. I haven't, you know, created new characters in a few years. So unless fun. they're going to die, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> die or go to jail. I mean, either Exactly, one. yeah. <laughs> 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 and then she has um her cousin Darlene and after Mallory purchased the uh, the bakery her aunt did pass away okay but um and Glenna had given Mallory her blessings to do whatever she wanted to do to the bakery to make it her own unfortunately her daughter Dar Darlene is having issues with that change okay so it's, yeah so we have that relationship going on there's something going on with Mallory's boyfriend. So it's- it All was, kinds of good it's stuff going on there. Right. Yes. And in this book, it's no secret. It's, you know, it's on the, the back cover blurb. Um, there's a food blogger who gets killed. Oh. And Mallory's suspected of it. So it okay. was fun to kill a food blogger. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> so- is there, I mean, um, Mallory's got a boyfriend, so is there any romance in it, or is it mostly just the yeah. mystery, or? No, there is, um, there is a romance in it, it's it building slowly, mm -hmm. and I'm really happy with how it turned out in book one, and we'll have to see what happens with the boyfriend in the book. Well, it's, now, when you do these, do you look at, like, the whole series arc I guess and kind of where the characters might be going and where some of these tensions might be figured out that kind of thing or does it just progress yeah. naturally <laughs> I got lucky with the resale boutique series for some reason I did have a character arc for Kelly Quinn 
And for, for the food blocker series, I did not have one. And I had wanted to create one when I sat down to create um, Mallory Monroe's world, but it didn't really happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I love it. Yeah, so I tried, but yeah. um, we'll see what happens when I sit down to write the second book. <laughs> That's so fun. So you're going to keep all three series going simultaneously then, huh? Well, hopefully, uh, you that's know, awesome. that's the goal, you know. Yeah, that's I awesome. Love that. I love it. That's a, that's a fun, fun job to have if you can get it right. <laughs> I, I know, that. and my neighbors love when I am doing the recipe testing for the box. No the doubt. So they're very happy that I continue running these that's series. Fun. So the, the resale boutique is, doesn't have food in it, I assume. No, okay. no. No, Kelly cannot cook at all, and I love it. It, it. it takes some pressure off me to create right. recipes. We talk about food. It's all about clothes. That's awesome. So How I'm fun. Very happy. Yeah, that's that's different and fun. So that's that's got to be enjoyable. Now, did you come into this with an audience from your blog or not really? No. Okay. No, because it had been probably about two, two and a half years from when I closed the, maybe okay. even longer because I closed the blog down around 2014, 2015. Okay. Yeah. And, and so it was first book didn't come out to 2018. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I know it, it seems like these days publishers are looking for people with an audience already. And so I was just curious. I don't know that they were doing that back then. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I was never asked about yeah. it. Yeah. Because it seems like these days that's part of the, um, I've heard different authors talk about that where, you know, you have to come in with an audience already or a platform, I guess they call it. And, um, I haven't, and even with my new publisher, um, Crooked Lane for this book, I haven't felt the pressure to have, to that's have awesome. a platform. That's awesome. So it's, you know, the, the focus is write your books. Yeah. You know, that's what they want. That's kind of how it should be. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, you know, and it's a bonus to be on the various platforms you know, to engage with readers. So, right. So uh, is cozy mysteries, are they still your favorite genre to read? Yes. Yes. I do enjoy them. Um, I, every month, you know, when new releases come out, like every single week, there's like two or three that I'm adding to my, either my Kindle or to my bookshelf. The unending I, list, I, right? <laughs> yeah, nonstop. And, but I do enjoy still romantic suspense. Like I just okay. picked up one. I haven't gotten a chance to start reading it yet. And I enjoy, you know, psychological thrillers, suspense. Okay. So, yeah, all all kinds of um, mm -hmm. suspense and mystery. I love that. Um, what are you reading right now? I am reading the Perfect Staging for Murder by Kathleen Bridge. Perfect Staging Staging. for Murder. Nice. Mm -hmm. I've not heard of that one. I'll have to check it out. Yeah, nice. her I love the series is cute. I, I've been reading it for years, so I enjoy it very much. Oh, that's fun. That's mm -hmm. fun. I um have you read Reese Bowen? Years ago. Okay. Not recently, but years ago. I've been so. caught up in her um Royal Spinus series. And um it's set in the twenties, I think, maybe even the thirties now. Some something to that effect. <laughs> but um she just has a new book coming out sometime soon she just did the cover release on it the other day and it was um I don't know, like book 16 or 18 something like that which is so crazy wow. yeah it's been it's been a while since I've read those as well but it just it's so amazing that you can keep a series going for so long to have that many books and that you still have an audience for it so what an amazing thing. It is. I love my readers. They are amazing people. They're so sweet. And I just, I, I'm so blessed to have them. The cozy mystery author, our readers are, I, I don't know, they feel like a special group because I'm in a couple of cozy mystery groups and okay. I don't know. I just love that. I think mm -hmm. it's really fun to be part of that. And if you enjoy cozy mysteries, there's, you know, that's, that just seems like a fun, fun group to hang out with. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. So um, what all are, I know you have um, the first of the cookie shop mysteries coming out. So what are you working on right now? I'm working on the next food blogger mystery. Okay. 
And is that, that the one that's it. coming out in the fall or the one after yes. that? No, the one that's coming out in the fall. I just okay. sent it off to my freelance editor. Nice. And then at the end of June, it goes to my publisher. Awesome. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. And then which, what's next after that one? Do you already have that I've, figured? Another free blogger mystery. Okay. I'm writing, them back, I'm writing two of them back to back. Nice. And having three different series, does it take a little bit to kind of get into, oh yeah, that's these characters or that's this setting or that kind of thing? Or does it just naturally come? It, it, I think it naturally comes because the settings are different and the characters, the main characters are also very different. Uh, but I do give myself a couple weeks in between projects. That's nice, so yeah. once I send off the manuscript to my editor at the end of June, I'll take a couple of weeks off before I start writing. Even though it's the same series, I, same series, I will still take a break. That's, that's nice. Important. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. And so are your books all set in um, Connecticut? No. Um, the Resale Boutique series is set out in Long Island, New York. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That's fun. And then the other two are in Connecticut? Yes. That's such a pretty area. That's I, uh, it is, especially in the fall. It's gorgeous. I, dr I drove through there late summer with my daughter last year. Um, she was moved up into Massachusetts, and it was fun to just see that area. Um, went through, you know, Upper New York and Massachusetts or uh, Connecticut mm -hmm. and that area. So beautiful. Such a nice, yeah. nice area. So, where online do you like to hang out with your readers? Well, I can be found on my website, okay. DebraSenefelder.com. And I am, act, I am active on Facebook, Deborah Senefelder author, and also on Instagram, Deborah Senefelder. So okay. those are the three places I mostly hang out. That sounds good. I am going to link to all three of those in the show notes so that people can find you and keep up with what your books are and what's coming out and um, hang out with you a little bit. So... Very good. And you do have a, a newsletter, correct? I do. I send out a monthly newsletter. So yes. Nice. I'd love for everyone to sign up for it. I I, I share recipes in it, puzzles, mm. a whole bunch of fun stuff. Excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This was a lot of fun to talk to you and to hear about your books. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I had a lot of fun talking to you about my books and about how the murder crumbles. And thank you. It's yeah. been a wonderful time. That's fun. Thanks for joining me today on the Literary Escape Podcast. If you enjoy hearing the behind the book story, then join me in the Literary Escape Society. We are a community of travelers who love books, or maybe book lovers who love to travel. Either way, if you need an escape, a literary escape, come join us as we read our way around the world together, one book at a time. Check out the show notes to learn more about the Literary Escape Society. And we'll see you next time on the next episode.